We're here at the Oregon Culinary Institute. We're going to show you how to slice and dice like a kitchen ninja. Keep it local starts right now. Welcome to Keep It Local. I'm Priya David along with Jenny Hansen. Hey. It's kind of scary watching Araxia, you uh, know, slice chop. Slice and dice. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like watching Knife me because I have no experience in the kitchen. But we're going to learn today. We are going to learn. All about. I know. I use our, our, I don't know if they're steak knives or they mm -hmm. look like steak knives. I use them for like everything. Yeah. So yeah. whether it be opening boxes or cutting or chicken. Cutting chicken. Yeah. Well, I never do that, but you know. <laughs> okay. Well, then maybe you don't need a knife all that right, often, really. Right. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Yeah. All right, well, let's turn back to cooking right now. How many knives do you use when you're cooking? Jenny, we know, uses one. <laughs> I maybe use a couple. And they're all those fancy knife sets, but you feel like you never really know what to use, when, right, uh, right. unless you really get into and it. Aroxia, and Aroxia, she's mm -hmm. kind of helping us along. She's at the Oregon Culinary Institute. So, Aroxia, what have you found out so far? Um, well, you know what? There's a whole skill set here, even when it comes to just sharpening your knives. Uh, Chef Woody tells me that it's best to sharpen your knives professionally once a year, but right now you're actually aligning your knives, right? That's right. I'm uh, just realigning the bevel, which is really what most people have to do in any given time between professional sharpenings. And how do you do that? Just, you just... The hone goes down, the blade's about a book of a matches across, the thickness of a book of matches back. No edge angle required here, it's just realigning, so anyone can do it. Okay, and then when it comes to cutting, the best way to practice the proper way to cut is with a potato, so that's, right. that's what you Yeah, do. yeah. Why is the potato the best way? Because it's very uh, soft and you have chances not to cut your fingers and stuff like that. Okay, and that's a really pretty potato. And yeah, guys, before I go, uh, I wanna show you this. Chef uh, Bikram, you wanna help me out here? Yep, all right. Oh, that's a knife. What's this for? Uh, that's to um, cut uh, animals and... Um, cut animals. Yeah. Their necks. Yep. Their necks. Chickens, too. Chickens, too. This is to cut some necks, guys. How scary is that? Yeah, pretty scary, especially in your hands there. Yeah. <laughs> give it back to the chef. <laughs> give it back to the chef. <laughs> I, I'm told to give it back to you. They don't trust me with the knife. All right. When we come back, we're going to show you a bunch more stuff, so stay tuned. All Great. right. Thanks, Rox. Hey, Welcome back to Keep It Local. So, you know, I just moved into this place and right. I'm not really a chef of any sort, but I'm starting to open up boxes and I got really excited that like mm -hmm. mixing bowls came out and yeah. casserole dishes and the knife block. Nice. Yeah. Yes, the big knife block. Yeah. So we're learning, you know, what to use them for today because a lot of times I'm like, oh, I don't know, they all look right. the same to me. Uh, Aroxia, she is back out at the Oregon Culinary Institute at 1701 Southwest Jefferson Street. That's in downtown Portland. So Aroxia, what have you been learning now? Out there well you it's best to sharpen your knives professionally once a year mm -hmm. as chef Woody Bailey told us and then to realign them which he'll teach us how to do um, several times throughout the year at home and I was asking chef Woody how many knives he has at home and he said 50 50 knives can you believe it that's crazy all right so we've got a bunch here tell us what each knife is for because oftentimes people probably just use one or two and they sure. use it for everything but there is a purpose behind there, every knife. There is, and everyone should have at least a chef's knife, and there's a few to choose from, and it really is based on what feels good in your hand. Uh, smaller hands like the Santoku blade. Okay. This short, nice, flat. And how do you know if it's a chef's knife? It just, I mean, this yeah. is a chef's knife. Yep. This is a chef's knife. Yep, these are classic French okay. chef's knife. This is a handmade Kramer knife, which, again, perfect balance, and it depends if you feel you can wield a big okay. knife or not. Uh, the Santakus are very co popular with women right now because the small hands, you can really right. move the knife around. Um, then what do we have? Then we have a combination of cleavers, and these are becoming very popular. These look scary. Out. Yep, and they have different purposes. Okay. This is, you know, really meant to oh. just come down and break things and chop big bones. And yet the smaller size, medium size, right. a lot of chefs in Portland right now, I sharpen for a lot of chefs' restaurants mm -hmm. in town, and a lot of chefs are moving to the inexpensive cleavers because they can scoop up a lot of things at the same ah. time. 
And what is this one for? This is interesting. It has like a nice curve. That's a curved boning knife, and that makes it really fun to work in a chicken. When you in wanna, a chicken. Everybody wants to work in a chicken. Come Do on. they? <laughs> Here's a boning okay. knife, too. This is a straight edge. And See, again, this is the kind of knife I have in my kitchen, and I pretty much cut everything with this knife. From I, bread to potatoes, which is rare, to just everything. Everything goes with this. That's is that wrong? <laughs> well, it's very common, and we promote people to come down to our knife skills classes and learn what different knives really do by practicing and getting a feel for them. How you hold the knife really affects which knives you like the best. And then, um, can you show us one more time how to realign knives, yeah. which is something people should be doing at their homes, right? People that have steels like these, we've all seen Dad doing this. Right, Looks really right. good, but it just dulls the knife. Okay. Get a professional sharpening once a year, okay. and then take something like a ceramic hone, nice and smooth, and it goes down onto something that's not going to slip. Okay. And that's true with sharpening, too. And then just run the knife from the back to the tip. I'm pushing down with about a pound of pressure, and I'm holding it at an angle that's not a number, just like a back of a book of matches. Okay. Okay? So it's not, you're just realigning, so you don't have to worry about removing metal, so angles aren't that important. Okay. Testing for sharpness, though, is important. And you can do that with a number of things. You could take a tomato, and if it just pushes through barely, or if it's very sharp, it goes through without any, this is just the weight of the knife. Now, I have a real quick question to ask you. This yeah. was something um, I always heard. If you cut a lemon, does that dull your knife and should you wash it right away or is that not true? Well, you should wash it right away because the citric, citrus is like an acid. Okay. Uh, and even though it's stainless steel, it can corrode. So that you never put your knives away wet and you want to keep anything that's a, that's a irritant like citrus or bleach away from your knives. Okay, Get it all right. Quickly. Thank you so much. Some good advice. So Priya, who knew, right? Every knife has a purpose I certainly don't do that <laughs> I, I have one or two knives and they get all kinds of fruits and vegetables cut with that two things so I don't know so that's me Rox could you ask um, Woody Bailey he's the owner there of Zen Blades right could you ask him about how much it costs to have a full set uh, resharpened yeah. Um, we want to know how much it would cost to have a full set of knives resharpened, approximately. Just well, a guesstimate. Full set of knives, like 10 knives? Le sure, 10. $50. Fifty dollars. Think five dollars a knife, depending on where you go. Okay. And you want to investigate the process to see if it's being done with a machine that takes off a lot of metal, because these chef's knives are very expensive. So okay. you want to make sure you're not having somebody run it through a machine and all steal right, all right. So that about steel. fifty bucks, and I guess it would be worth it in the long run, because then you don't have to ruin those knives and have to buy new ones. So invest yeah. in the fifty bucks. All right, Rox. Thanks so much. We'll check back in with you in just a little bit. We'll check back in with Aroxia too. We're here at the Oregon Culinary Institute hanging out with Chef Bikram. He's the kitchen ninja and as you can tell he's got a couple things to teach me here because my skills are not quite as fast as his. We'll show you how to slice and dice next. Keep it here, keep it local. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Keep It Local. So when you're cooking, don't you kind of wish you could just chop, 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 make it all go faster? I feel like that'll get me through the process of cooking even faster, just like the pros. Do you like my blank look? I'm giving you, I've told you I don't cook, but we were watching Aroxia yeah. earlier chop, and I was like, whoa. I, like how, <laughs> I was so worried she was going to cut her finger off. I know, she couldn't even look up no. at us. Well, I think she was worried too. So she's over at the Oregon Culinary Institute. You see the location on our map. And Aroxia, I see you're concentrating once again. I'm mincing. I'm very good at mincing, as you can see. I didn't cut my finger, but I did kind of cut my nail, but I'll be okay. I'm here with Chef Bikram, and he is going to teach us the proper way to hold a knife, because apparently I don't hold it correctly, right? This is how I hold the knife, and this oh. is incorrect. All so, right. what's the proper way? Okay, when you hold it uh, properly, when you hold the knife, Yes. This bolster right here, that's yeah. what that designed for you to put your finger, your finger okay. index, and then your thumb goes like that, okay. and the point of this, and then three fingers goes like that. So you're pinching Pinching it. that. Okay. And that way you have more secure your hand. Okay. okay. Then you hold your, something like a round carrot. Okay. Uh, that's a really good thing to see. Just cut it like that. See? Straight. You look at the spine, not that way, not that way. Just look at it right on the spine and then slice it forward. Okay. And then you're keeping your fingers yeah. like... It's, we call it claw, okay? Claw, we're clawing yeah. the food. Yeah. We're claw. Okay. You know? And like that. Okay. 
When you do a claw, you have to tuck underneath this tip of your finger, and that way you won't slice your so fingernail. Don't hold it like this. Yeah. Hold it like this. Yeah. Okay. And you're in that way you're more secure, right? Hold and on. then like this? Yeah. Oh, uh, you're. Oh, I did it again. Yeah. Oh, I'm that's sorry. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, One more time. Go. I'm failing Forward. here already. Do you see that? Watch your thumb. There you go. Okay. I just feel like there you go. this gives me a better grip though. Yeah, but the thing is when you hold it, you have to hold this together like that. Right. That way you have index finger toward okay. for, front, forward and then you just slice it. Have you it. ever been injured? Many times. Many times. Yeah, I won't lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> Many uh, times, but you keep doing it, huh? Yeah, but not now. It was a long time ago. Okay. How about uh, celery? You were saying people cut celery yeah. the wrong way all the time. Yeah. What's the right way? The thing is, a lot of people always, I don't know why people always cut and they try to fight with the celery. Right. Okay. Anything you cut, always make it into segments smaller, smaller about segments. a two to two and a half inch, okay. and that way it'll be much easier and look really nice too. And you cut into like that, and wow. cut it into that. You have a foundation, you have a base, and then you can make it dice. Wow, very nice. See, You're and it will be really than I right. Am. Can you show us something real quick? Can you chop for us real quick? Sure. I like it when you get all fancy. You want to see a fancy I stuff? I want to see a fancy one. Of course. <laughs> all right. I'll show you really fancy stuff. Okay. Couple you're stuff. Cut an onion. All right. This is called a shallot. Sh yeah. Okay. <clears throat> when you do this, this is a. And look, he's not even looking at his hands. He's looking at me. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Can you do it with your eyes closed? Yes, of course. Okay. Let's see. Wow. There you go. Wow. Hey? It's uh, another one. I really wanted to show you really quick. I can do it with my eyes closed yes. too. Yes. There you go. You did it. Yeah. There you go. You got it. <laughs> and, uh, All right. And uh, as you continue to show me some things, I'm going to tell Priya and Jenny about the Oregon Culinary Institute because this is something I did not know. You can actually come down here and have lunch or dinner and you get a four course meal and lunch is, go ahead and yep. drop away, uh, lunch is about $12 for a four course meal and dinner is about $18. So that's pretty neat. I'm, I'm looking at this menu and it's pretty fancy stuff. We've got cauliflower soup, blood and orange pomegranate salad, uh, angel food cake with uh, sorbet. So it's pretty amazing. Um, you can stop by or they do encourage you to make reservations because it does fill up fast. So mm. pretty neat, isn't yeah. it? Joe and I were just talking about going there, but in other news, Aroxia, I was expecting like a YouTube moment there. We were kind of clenching our stomachs <laughs> when you were chopping. He could have stuck his hand in there. <laughs> So you wanted me to be on YouTube injured. Okay, got yeah, it. Well, Thanks, I Jenny. You were going to injure someone is what I was worried about. <laughs> At least we learned a lesson. Do not fight with our celery. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is true. Do not fight with your celery and claw at your food. Whatever you're holding, claw at it. All right. Okay. Thanks, Rox. Right See you guys <laughs> later. Right Good to know. <laughs>